this point is where we want to start adding um, our images. Um, if we have a CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet, it's essentially just a document that tells um, you know the ebook reader uh, or a web browser how to render uh, the HTML that is inside of the ebook. Um, and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Um, you want to upload that now or upload any fonts that you need to, uh, for example, display um, Hebrew, Greek, Arabic, or anything like that. Um, we're not going to get too, uh, delve too deep into fonts or anything like that because um, that's a bit more specialized and a bit beyond uh, the demo. But again, um, as I've said throughout the training, if you need help doing that, you can always contact us and we're here uh, willing to help. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my images, right? Because there are images in this file, um, this book that we're trying to convert. So again, same upload as we've been doing before, same process, right? And then I'm just going to go to my images folder. And here I'll see that I have everything and I have my cover file as well, right? So I'm going to go ahead and upload everything. So you want to upload everything at this stage here before you convert to ebook. And what you'll see is that once you um, hit OK, you'll see that this list here populated, and you'll see that things will, uh, will get converted. And so you can convert things to PNG, JPEG. Um, you can set the max width and height. We usually set it at 600 as the default um, because that's the one that works uh, best uh, with eBooks. You can actually upload your images, and if you don't want them to be processed, you just uncheck that, and your images will be uploaded as is. Right? And at this stage, we'll want to also set which of these image files is our cover because the cover file will not get uh, processed and shrunk down to 600 by 600. We actually want it to be, um, I believe 1800 is uh, pixels um, at its longest. So at its height is the, is the uh, appropriate dimension, right? So we'll set the cover here, which is our cover file. We'll just click set cover. You'll see it'll turn green and our cover will be set. That tells the hub, don't touch this file. You don't have to convert this. Convert the rest of it. Go ahead and click Upload Files. The file will upload, the files will upload and they will be processed at the same time. So it's not a separate, um, separate um, task. So you'll see that the cover is still set as the cover. Now we have this images or image uh, section and you see that all our images are here nicely. Uh, converted up to that 600 by 600 dimensions that we set. Uh, we can also add, um, I believe we can add all text here, um, but we're, we're not going to do that now. But those are options that we'll discuss when we discuss accessibility next week. Um, so um, at this point, we've uploaded everything that we're going to upload. We're going to use the default um, CSS, the default scribe CSS uh, for this, um, this demonstration. Um, if you wanted to upload your own CSS, uh, you can do that um, the same way that we just uploaded those images and we've been uploading files uh, up until now. If you don't upload anything, it will default to the default CSS. Um, so uh, the other thing is, is that if you notice, we don't have any tagging in our SCML uh, for the cover. Um, the file still load. They should still load. That's what I um, what I tried earlier. But we'll see if we run into that issue. Good question, Mark. Uh, because JPEG without the E uh, and JPEG with the E are two different uh, file formats. Tim can talk a little bit more about that um, later if he so chooses. But um, that's beyond my area of expertise. Um, so at this point, what we have, we have our files um, ready. We have JPG content here, um, JPEG here, and we have our SCML. Again, if we don't upload a CSS, the, um, the hub will include the scribe default one by default. Um, and if you don't include any fonts, then no fonts will be included. Um, at this point, what we'll then do is convert our file. So we'll take the SCML, go again to our little convert bar up here, and we're going to choose EPUB 3 plus Mobi. You always get a Mobi file whenever you uh, convert. Mobi is the Kindle um, file format. Um, we're going to use um, EPUB 3 because that's the standard. But if for some reason you need EPUB 2, which has some less um, uh, robust abilities that used to be the standard, you have that option available as well. So EPUB 3. 
And again, you can see the headings. Uh, the hub will automatically link chapter heads back uh, to the TLC if they are, if they match. Um, so you got to make sure that your wording is correct. Um, notes are, are reciprocally linked. In other words, if you click on the note, it'll take you. Um, if you click on the reference in text, it'll take you to the um, to the note. And then if you click on the number in the note, it'll take you back to where uh, you were. Uh, small caps backwards compatibility. Some ebook readers, especially older ones, don't display uh, small caps uh, correctly. So we have a workaround for that, and that's what uh, that stands for. And um, in, I believe this is the toc.ncx, which is a, almost like a metadata file, um, the table of contents will be nested um, as it is in, um, in the actual uh, print file. So um, again, if you ever need more information on these, you can click on the information boxes and they will give you more information on that. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll leave all of them, all of the default settings on and we'll convert. It takes a little bit. While we wait, are there any questions, concerns, worries? No? Okay. And so we'll see here that we now have our ebook and we also have our Mobi file, which we can open up on a Kindle, but we'll worry about the EPUB. Uh, for now, right? Checks indicate that it's valid, that everything is okay. We're going to go ahead and download this. And again, I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing. We're just keep the organization um, the same as we've been doing now. So I'll cut this. I'll go back here and I'll just create a new folder and call it OTN. I guess this one's gonna be called ebook ebook, but you all catch my drift. I'm gonna call it ePub, but for now. And so what you wanna do is you want to then open this in digital editions. You can also load this onto an iPad to check it out. I'll do that now using digital editions. I hope that everybody uh, was able to install it. Once again, if you weren't able to, um, please follow along here so that you can see the result of the, the work. So um, I can actually right click on this, open with and digital editions. If that doesn't come up, you can also just open up digital editions and drag the EPUB file into it and that should work as well. And digital editions popped up over here. And here's our ebook, right? Um, when you um, have a wide enough screen, it actually does like a two page display. Um, You'll see page numbers here. If you notice that physical chemistry, because of the structure tags, it got split off from um, the series title, which is on its own separate page. And see, that's what the structure tags do. Here's our title page. We have our links nicely highlighted in blue. You can actually click on those and they will go to uh, where they need to go. And we have our table of contents. Unit one and unit one is backlinked, but here's something interesting. Because the names, you know, chapter one, introductory mathematics, didn't match exactly, we didn't get the chapter, uh, the chapter um, number backlinked. And we could go in and fix that. Uh, for now, we're not gonna worry about that because unit one is linked. So we'll go down to this. So we have our chapter contents. And you'll see that our default CSS is pretty bare bones. It's pretty just like, you know, so you can read it. Here's our images, um, our fig, fig H's, see how they're bold, um, our B heads, A heads, our tips box is surrounded by box, our sidebar is different. And even though this is bare bones, you could, once you have your CSS, you can actually make this pop, make this uh, different. We just are not gonna have that. So Mark, I'm not quite following by page numbers not being set correctly. They do not correspond to the page, um, to the page numbers on the print. But why would you have them visible anyway? 
oh, that is actually just digital editions. That's the way that they're setting it up. So okay. it's not something that we that we do and we leave them in there like for people to see. It's just digital editions just does that. Um, okay. Let's see, it just does that line. Yeah. Um, I believe on the iPad we have um, methods set up so that the page numbers actually display correctly. Yeah, there's an Apple specific, um, I think it's the TOC that XHTML file, and that's mm -hmm. the one that can actually displays a page list and it matches up pages to print and um, little, um, and the electronic version of it. But there's similar things in um in the, in different readers. I don't know if anybody uses like a, there's an app called Libby. It's like a what's made by OverDrive. It's essentially an online library app. So when I download a book based on the font size, it says I'm at page you know 490 of an 800 page book, even though the print book is something like 360 pages. Mm -hmm. So that's just sort of like a, a mar like a marker based on your font size and things like that. Yeah. Okay. And so we'll scroll through. And as I was saying, the CSS, you can actually um, see it. Um, you can see that we can, um, using the CSS, we can make this mo look more like the print. Um, um, print version, or we can make it look slightly different depending on what we need for accessibility and so on and so forth. Um, but we're not going to get into CSS because that will take a, a class all on its own. But here you have your equation. You have your images displaying uh, correctly. And we have our review questions here at the end, nice and Latin uh, for those of us who can understand it. But here we can actually see a bit of an issue because this URL is so long, the way that um, um, Digital Editions is displaying it, it's trying to keep it all together and it's breaking that way. If I were to actually reduce the size here, we'll see that that break doesn't happen. So those are some things that we have to take into account with some older e-readers that they're not as uh, robust, I guess. Um, and they'll have certain rules like that. Like they'll be like, oh, URLs need to be kept together even if it looks all kinds of wonky. Um, and we can insert breaks into the actual URL line so that it, um, you know, a non-intrusive break so that it, when we're in this view, it'll display correctly. But when we're in this view, um, you know, it'll also display correctly. And here you have your yeah. little superscript. And Tim, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was just going to jump in and say it, it is a bit of a, a change in your mindset when you're going from the print version to this version. Um, because you're, you're kind of losing a little bit of control. We had a client that was asking to set up something so that on their computer, you know, the left-hand page looked like this and the right-hand page looked like that. We've explained that even if we make it look perfect and great in their view, we're going to give it to somebody who's using like a Nook from eight years ago, and they're going to say, hmm, that font's a little big, I'm going to be smaller, and everything just gets totally changed. So, you know, we're really looking at like reflowable, adaptable text at this point. And so here on the left-hand side, if we would have put in our author, you would have seen our author. This is where it reads the metadata. Um, the iPad and the Nook and the Kindle, they all read metadata differently and display it in a different way. Um, so, um, but it also gives you this option to um, go directly to the cover, go to the title page, so on and so forth. Right? And that is actually our EPUB, where this would be where we would be done, right? Uh, unless we wanted to get like nice and designy and start messing around with the CSS. I'll just briefly show you what the CSS looks like. Um, and then we're, what we're going to do after that is we're going to do, uh, we're going to split off into our Zoom rooms, break rooms. I don't know what we're calling them now, right? Uh, QC rooms, we'll call them that. Um, and you'll see that there's this QC demo file. Um, what well, we're going to do is the same thing we did last time where we're going to open up that in digital editions and we're going to look through it um, and you're going to point out errors um, that exist uh, in that. Uh, there is an ebook QC checklist um, just like there is for everything else. But again, it's a lot of the same sort of like checklist format is does this match, does this match, does this match, and so on and so forth. Uh, so just really quickly, we'll show you what um, the CSS looks like. Right. And this is a CSS file. So as you can tell, um, you'll have your tags here or your structure tags in this case, so box, cover, and note, so on and so forth. And then you'll have sort of every uh, parameter describing this. Um, 
So for example, display in block, margin top one EM space, margin bottom one EM space, and so on. And as you mess around with this, the ebook will change. Um, so um, as you can see uh, by how uh, it's not super complex. And in fact, you can go to w3schools.org. They have a very good tutorial on CSS. And it's once you, once the language clicks, then it, it all sort of makes sense. And it's pretty straightforward. It's written in, in, in you know, plain English language. Uh, so margin left 2EM, that means it's 2EM spaces um, indented the whole paragraph. Um, but once you, um, once you get the language, everything will click and you'll be able to actually um, create, you know, ebooks like what you see on, you know, on the Amazon bookstore. Well, those are Kindles, but still, um, you know, or on the iTunes bookstore. So um, we can also help you with this if you have any questions with that. So at any point, if you have questions, you can always contact us. I know I've said that about 500 times today, but I think it's important because we are here to help in that instance. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and stop sharing now and uh, hand it over to Karen, who's the one who can break us off into QC recording.